sure that we are live. Yep, there it goes. There it goes. Pop that up. Yeah, somewhere around 20, 30 second delay on this uh, between me recording and the video. That's fine. So we're going to do what we always do, folks. We're going to do what we always do. And that is uh, start sharing. Bottom bum, bottom bum. Sharing the post with some people. So if you do happen to tune in while I'm doing that, uh, please feel free to hit that like button and share this amongst uh, people that you would like to uh, watch this uh, this particular episode with. So we're gonna we're gonna get into some shit, folks. We are gonna get into some shit. Um, Sorry about the awkwardness. I'm starting this a little bit earlier than 6 p.m. So by the time 6 p.m. rolls around, uh, you know, we kind of get through all of the all of the sherry shares and the and all of that kind of all of that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, as you guys come in, pardon the awkwardness. Uh, I don't really have any sort of staff or anything. Uh, to help me with this, it's just it's just me doing my thing, um, kind of a solo act, you know, uh, doing doing four or five different people's jobs all at once, uh, producer and person on screen, editor, all that kind of stuff. So um, I appreciate your patience. And uh, hey, while you're at while you're you know hitting the like button, hitting the share button, and all that all that kind of good stuff. Um, what would be cool is if uh, if you left a comment uh, about how you're doing uh, today. It's uh, it's Saturday. Uh, I hope you're doing well. I usually do a check-in at the top of the show, but I thought it'd be cool. Uh, and in these live streams, that if uh, if some if some folks if they felt like it, if you feel like it, you 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 do a little check-in for yourself as well. You leave a little comment about how you're doing, what you're physical mental health state is what you're excited about what you're not excited about whatever you need to get off your chest and then we can kind of read through it together and talk about what you're what you're going through as well uh so i thought that'd be that'd be a cool little thing to do so yeah feel free to feel free to do that as i'm <laughs> slowly trying to uh uh get these out to a few groups that i think would be interested in this and then invite a few folks um to this as well. It takes me maybe 10 minutes to do stuff like this. So uh, I appreciate you people popping in. Uh, stay tuned. Hang in there with me um, to uh, to go through all these shares. So like I said, I'm just uh, I'm just one man. I'm just one man trying to live the dream. Trying to live the dream in our waking nightmares. But uh, yeah, feel free to um, feel free to leave a little comment. Let me know how you're doing, and uh, and then we'll do our check-in to kick things off. I'm trying to reach a few new people, a few new groups maybe, but I probably only can do one or two more. Um, and the reason for that is because if I overshare... Facebook doesn't think I'm a real person, and that's not good because uh, I am a real. I, I am a real person. God damn it! I am a real boy. Facebook can't tell me what I am and isn't. All right, we're almost through, people. We're almost through the the the, the weird, awkward phase of the looking glass of uh, of this thing here. I appreciate your patience. I appreciate you hanging out with us, uh, and hopefully, hopefully, this thing won't crap out on me. I've been having some problems with Facebook. I don't know if you have or not. 
I sure have, uh, where it will, um, it'll just like stop fucking playing the video. Like it'll just stop in the middle. I don't know. It kind of sucks and it's very annoying and I kind of get a little annoyed by it. Uh, and it's, it's part of the reason why I haven't been able to like watch a bunch of people that I thought I would enjoy. Um, it's been very challenging in that regard. So I don't know if that's been happening to any of you guys out there, but it sure has been happening to me and it sure is, sure is frustrating when that happens because I want to support my friends, but then Facebook crashes. And then when I try to reload the stream, it won't reload the stream. And then when I reload Facebook, I can't find the goddamn stream again. Uh, yeah, it's very frustrating when that sort of stuff happens. And, uh, you know, hoping, hoping that it doesn't keep happening, hoping that they, they fix it. They probably want you to, to, to pay to, get that shit fixed because it's fucking Facebook and they they love money. That's their thing. They're big fans of big fans of the old old money. The old money bags. Almost done here, folks. I just want to invite a few folks that I know were uh, our regular viewers. Um of the content here. Uh, some of the super fans. If you will. Some of the people that, that do engage uh, in the conversation. And. All right. I think that's, I think we're almost, yeah. Uh, all right. I think that's good. I think that's good. Hey, I want to remind you guys, I'm going to post the, the link to the uh, May 22nd virtual stand up comedy shows that I'm doing. Each show is going to be different. Um, the May 22nd show is the material that I'm working on is, uh, regarding a lot of the stuff that we're, we're talking about, uh, talking about these days, which is, um, universal basic income. Uh, we're talking about vaccines in that show as well. So, um, yeah, if you, if you can make it to that show, I hope, I hope that you do, you, you got to get those tickets though. That is an important thing is you got to get those tickets uh, because the tickets are how I'm going to be able to send you the login information to, uh, to the show itself. Um, and, uh, that way it's an extra layer of security because zoom has had a lot of security issues over the, over the last couple of months because everybody's using them, uh, so often and so frequently. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you know, you got to get to get a ticket. If you're a sustaining member, uh, there is a code within the Patreon to get a free ticket. So get a free ticket. Uh, if you, if you're, if you're not a sustaining member and you want to purchase a ticket, it's a, it's a, it's a $5 minimum. Uh, that's all it is to get in. Uh, and then an hour before the show, one hour before the show, I send you a link, uh, and a code and a password to enter the zoom showroom. Um, and then like doors will open 15 minutes before the show. We come in, we talk about like what this is and kind of go over some of the rules and then we kick into the show. So, uh, I'm kind of excited cause I'm, uh, I'm, I'm leaning into it a little bit more and I'm developing like little segments that I think I can, uh, I can like make into recurring segments and, uh, come in and talk about. So I'm very excited about that. Um, Jay, Jay's watching. Hello, Jay. Uh, I'm doing okay. Uh, and it's very good to see you as well. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. And, uh, yes, uh, yeah. Facebook has been very glitchy and buggy and I hope that that doesn't happen during the stream. Uh, but it's been very frustrating. Um, 
to to do that. Uh, but let's uh, let's dive into it. Uh, I think we've done all the invites and the and the postings and as much as I can get done without it being uh, obnoxious. Um, th toss the phone uh, over over to the bed so I'm not distracted by any buzzes. Uh, we'll do. We'll start with the check in as we always do. The check in at the very top of the show. Uh, I'm okay. I could be better if I'm being honest. Uh, I think the temperature fluctuations and the rain, and then it goes to being humid, and then it gets warm, and it gets windy, and then it gets rainy again, has kind of done a number of my sinuses over the last week. Um, my throat's been not doing super awesome. Uh, that's not particularly great. And I've been waking up pretty stuffy uh, and groggy. So I've kind of had a late start Oh, or rather a later start to the day than, than, I, than I wanted to. And because I think I'm just kind of laying in bed a lot more, um, because I'm all groggy and stuffy, like my body has gotten tighter. Um, so I need to really get back into just like loosening up and getting back into the exercise routines that I had in place. Um, so, uh, but I have been going on, on like walks, like these nice long hour long walks. Um, that has kind of helped just kind of, move me around and, and get my, um, energy back up due to that though. You might see me use, use a little, uh, tissue for the sniffles there. <laughs> so I apologize if that's a little, uh, that's a little gross. I understand it's a little, it can be a little gross. Um, other than that, you know, I, I have, um, I, I I've been in a mildly frustrating mood just in terms of like, uh, the state of the world um, and some of the things that I've been seeing as of late have been uh, less than encouraging. Um, and I think I've just kind of let it be frustrating and lost sight a little bit of like people doing good things for each other, uh, which does exist in the world. There's uh, and, and there is hope. Uh, out there as well, you know, we are seeing like a lot of strikes and a lot of mutual aid and uh, just just like general generosity, like just people that are um, being being super cool to each other. Uh, I think that is I I lose sight of that sometimes because I get bogged down and caught up with the minutia of bullshit. So. Um, yeah, I think that's, but other than that, I'm doing, I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm getting through the days. Um, you know, I think part of, part of the reason why I'm letting the minutia get to me and, and bother me as much as, uh, as much as I normally do is I think because I'm not feeling super awesome because of my allergies and the sinuses and stuff. Uh, so like my energy has not been super great, but, um, yeah, other than that, things are going pretty well. I'm I'm excited about this show next week. I've got a bunch of material that I'm super jazzed about that uh uh that I think is gonna turn out well. I'm 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 working on the show, I'm editing a lot of the stuff, I'm working on uh graphics and illustrations and things of that sort uh throughout throughout the uh the the, the week. Um I'm excited about the content that's coming up. Um and I'm excited about this new album I'm I'm releasing. Um, and, uh, yeah, so a lot of exciting things are happening. I think I'm just letting my, uh, congestion and allergies and my, my grogginess kind of wear me down a little bit more than I probably need to. And I don't need to, and I need to like, just kind of recalibrate my head, uh, which I might do tonight. I might take the evening to kind of clean up my, clean up my space in my room and, um, kind of just uh just get a little mind reset uh but you know i've been drinking a bunch of tea i have i have my i have my tea here uh ready to ready to go and i have my my jar of water as well to uh make sure that my throat is uh properly properly lubricated uh throughout this throughout this video and like i mentioned this might end up being a long one because the streams have been running long lately um, and I'm fine with that, honestly. Uh, as long as you guys are, are are in it, or you guys are cool to troop through it, uh, I'm I'm cool to fucking keep going and talking about this shit and get and, and doing a deep dive on a bunch of this shit. Uh, so, without any further ado, that's the check in for the day. 
Uh, as usual, you can leave a comment while I'm doing the piece. I will read your comments at the end of the piece and do a comment response thing so that I don't lose uh, track of what's going on. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, let's jump right into our first discussion topic. So this story um, comes from uh, my good friend, Mark Viola, very funny comedian, Mark Viola. You should check out his YouTube channel, uh, support what he does. Uh, he's another fellow touring comedian and uh, 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 one of my closest friends uh, in the world. And uh, so we talk a lot and he sent me this article about uh, Ohio schools uh, basically said that they can't teach yoga in school because a hundred and some odd, I think it was 105. I might be wrong. It might be 150. I might be getting those numbers dyslexically confused. Uh, but over a hundred pastors basically said that, uh, they can't teach yoga in schools because it is a religion. Um, and uh, and so the schools caved. They bent at the knee and they said, you know, freedom of it's 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 a, a First Amendment issue. We can't force kids to to take part in this religious thing. Right. Uh, and, and they make all these claims about like, well, they're not teaching intelligent design. And now they're teaching this Eastern religious philosophy thing. And it's not good for the kids and blah, 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 blah. Like they went on and on about all this shit. All of a sudden separation of church and state is important to, uh, to these churches. Now, all of a sudden they're like, Oh, well, you gotta, you gotta do the church and state thing. That's a fucking thing you gotta do. You know, it's important. You can't just not fucking separate the churches and the States. Cause that's, if you do, then the Muslims and the Hindus are going to come in here and they're all going to eat your children while you sleep. That's just like, that's like a thing that, you know, because, because Jesus, I guess, is that's the reason. They can, we'll just we'll just throw the Jesus blanket reason for everything that we're doing, and everything's fine, uh, and that justifies all the weird, c crazy shit that we believe in. But uh, so they wrote a letter, right? They wrote a letter. So I, I wanted to read the letter uh, with you guys because I think the letter's kind of awesome. Uh, in 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 a ter in a terrible awful way, it's it's hilarious and uh, uh, like fucking weird. Anyway, let, so so let's let's read through this. Uh, it says, uh, "Dear state and school officials, thank you for your dedicated students uh, service to our students. As leaders of the faith community in North Central Ohio, we would like to bring to your attention the following concern. <gasps> oh, so cordial." It is our understanding that a form of Eastern religion called yoga is being proselytized during compulsory class hours in school district, school districts Clearfork, Galleon, Lexington, Lucas, Mansfield, and Shelby. Yoga is not nearly a uh, merely a external physical practice with purely physiological effect, but rather an internal spiritual practice advertised as being able to provide the power to change an individual and transform the world. Specifically, yoga's stretching and breathing component called asanas and pranayama in Sanskrit are intended to be spiritually transformative. Boy, what a terrible thing for children to learn. What an op to, to learn how to stretch and breathe Guys, that's crazy. If there's anything we can learn from the Christian nation that is America is you can't stretch and boy, howdy, don't breathe. Just uh, don't do it, <laughs> you guys. Just uh, it, breathing can spiritually transform you and that is bad. What you need is uh, w breathe when you're told to so you can be good little listeners uh, and worker bees. Don't. Don't just be stretching and breathing. That's crazy. That's <laughs> spiritually transformative is like it's a bad thing. <laughs> the courts have repeatedly ruled that yoga and meditation are religious practices. Uh, so they, they start talking about some of these. A, a 1988 Arkansas case commonly known as Powell versus Perry. I've never heard of this case, but but so it's like I don't know how commonly known this is. <laughs> like Brown versus the Board of Education. 
that's a commonly known court case, right? Roe v. Wade, that's a commonly known. But I don't remember Powell v. Perry to be like a commonly known thing, right? Uh, anyway, so Powell, Powell v. Perry concluded that yoga is a method of practicing Hinduism. Uh, yoga, I think, is part of Hinduism. It's not. It's not pr uh, it like the definition of Hinduism, although that's the claim that they're making here. And that's the claim that they're saying that these um, these court cases are making about yoga, that it is um, that it's a religious practice. Like saying that yoga is a religion in and of itself is saying that eating the body of Christ is a religion in and of itself. Like it is a part of the ritual. Like you practice yoga as part of Hinduism, um, and, you know, part of this thing, too, is like a lot of Eastern religions, uh, Eastern spiritualities, Eastern belief systems, whatever you want to call them, they kind of view religion and way of life starts to get a little blurred. You know, it starts to get a little blurred, um, especially I, I grew up Hindu, so I kind of know that because it is really a way of life. It is really a way that you uh, of, of how you live your life. Right. So there when you go through kind of like the bar mitzvah of Indians, um, it's called Punal. I did the whole thing. You get a thread. It proves that you're a Brahmin. And then you have to do like three different prayer rituals, uh, one at sunrise, one when the sun is at high noon and one uh, in the evening. And there are like I think there are certain benefits to why people chose to meditate and and, and there are religious rituals through this, but part of the religious rit rituals include breathing and self-reflection and meditation. And to me, meditation should be taught um, in schools. I think kids should learn how to meditate. And meditation is not a religious practice. Uh, I believe meditation is more of a spiritual practice. And it is a practice of, um, in, like, you, you're just looking within yourself and you're learning how to be still without constantly worrying about, you know, the, the state of the world. I have this thing. I have that thing. You can just kind of be still and be centered and be focused and be present in the moment that you're in. Um, so you're not as reactive as, as uh, you know, hyper, or, or rather, I guess, hyper reactive uh, might be the, the, the better way to say it. Um, so as this letter continues, uh, the 1995 Self-Realization Fellowship Church versus Amanda uh, Ananda Church of Self-Realization case labeled the Hindu-Yoga Spiritual Tradition as a religious tradition. In 1979, Malnick versus Yogi uh, case outlined transcendental meditation as a religion. Now, transcendental meditation, I think... To, from from what I've looked into about it, I'm not an expert in transcendental meditation or anything. Um, that to me is different than just practicing meditation, right? Like to you know to kind of focus on your breathing, to stay still, to be present in in the world that you're. That I I, I feel like transcendental meditation takes those some of those principles and goes a different direction with it. Um, it's, it's, I, I don't know if that, so again, it's like if, if they're, if they're saying that yoga and meditation is being applied in schools and they're claiming that that's, that's the religious aspect of it. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know if that's the best case that they can make for it. Uh, especially with meditation, like saying that transcendental meditation is, there is a religion when it's not the same thing as like regular meditation, it kind of makes the, the case of these people a little murky. Anyway, uh, they continue. Uh, the practice of Eastern religion in the classroom during school hours is a form of coercion due to its mandatory practice. Uh, teacher, due to its mandatory practice, teacher authority and peer pressure. In fact, the endorsement of yoga is a violation of the First Amendment's Establishment Clause, which forbids the government from picking religious winners and losers and enforcing it as a choice. Without question, Eastern religion is a practice in conflict with the vast majority of those in our country, uh, whether from Judeo-Christian traditions or otherwise. Kind of, but I was coerced into having to deal with like Judeo-Christian norms 
we have to take Easter off, but I don't get Diwali off. I don't remember celebrating Ramadan when I was in school. We celebrate all the Judeo-Christian holidays. Isn't that, isn't that a form of coercion? Isn't that normalizing Judeo-Christian traditional values within the school structure? That we have to observe these holidays, but not the holidays of any other religion? So if that is the case, then that means that no more Easter holidays, no more Christmas, you know? Unless you're going to include fucking Hanukkah and Diwali and Kwanzaa and Ramadan and Eid and all of these other religious holidays. And you're going to incorporate, somehow incorporate those into your school calendar and offer it as, as like, this is a day off for everybody to maybe go s celebrate or learn or do whatever you want to do with that day but you don't you don't see that happening and i was forced into i was for coerced into doing that nobody fucking wrote a letter on my behalf for that shit nobody wrote a letter on behalf of the jewish kids either for that matter you know so they go on i think they're gonna give uh yeah this isn't the, we, we don't have much to go uh back up here. Sorry, I lost my place there. Okay, after the effort, after efforts to contact school district regarding this issue, our findings list the following example of local Eastern indoctrination. In, to, in November 2016, Shelby Auburn Elementary holds assembly during school hours where yoga instructor gives religious instruction to children. That's making the case that, you know, it, it is it is a religion that yoga itself is a religion. Spring of 2017, Galleon Intermediate School permits yoga instructor to Im implement a student-focused religious program for one dozen students with attention, emotional, and behavioral issues. District pr uh, publicly plans to start religious program for the second nine weeks of the year. Again, um, they are making the claim that it's religious. They, the, the schools are not, and the yogis um, or, or the yoga instructor themselves are not. Unless they go in and tell you to worship the sun and the earth and whatever, like then maybe. But I th th these are very vague claims of religious teachings in school. In November 2018, Shelby Auburn Elementary permits middle school student under the teaching supervision to give uh, religious instruction to kindergartners during bowing to the sun god Surya and using devotional praying hand poses. Now, this is another vague example. Yes, they're talking about the sun god uh, Surya there, but that could be a lesson. Was this a lesson in, in Hindu practices? Was this a lesson in um, uh, a... a uh, a yoga in a historical context or, you know, so it's just like this happened, you know, we learned about the crusades. We learned about Judeo Christian traditions. We learned about how, um, you know, the, the religiosity of certain uh, political figures in America, like the, is that teaching religion in school? Should that be barred? I mean, if you're going to teach religion as a historical context, um, I think that's totally fine. Um, because you should learn it because religion and the uh, decisions made by leadership throughout history based on religion, t religious teachings is important. But you don't teach religious philosophy, you teach religion as history, and that kind of changes things. In November 2018, Shelby Dowd's elementary permits religious instruction to be given to 75 third graders during gym class performing yoga poses. Uh, monthly religious instruction ensues. They keep they keep making the claim that this is all religious, and I I, I think they're kind of on shaky ground to begin with. Spring of 2019, Fork Belleville Elementary permits religious instruction to be given to a third grade class during homeroom involving devotional yoga poses and yoga mats. Yoga mats are not religious. Sorry. Uh, I'm dead. <laughs> they're just not, they're, they're not religious. That, that would be saying like incense are religious. That's, that's, that's like saying fucking wine is religious because it served a church. In October of 2019, Lucas High School permits religious instruction to ninth graders involving devotional yoga poses 
and yoga mats during physical education classes in November 2019. They go on. 2020, uh, Lexington mother testifies to a uh, school board that her sons were pressured to participate in yoga activities without permission during class. Episodes cited including music teacher showing a video instructing third grades to do postures, bow to the sun god, uh, and use devotional prayer hands at the heart. Uh, life skills, teacher showing video uh, discussing practice of yoga, of how to uh, collect life-giving forces of the universe to seventh graders on April 2018, of the language arts, teacher requiring sixth graders to perform daily postures, sal salute the sun god Surya, bow to the sun, and praying hands pose. According to mother, the teacher pressured the students by saying, you're not too cool to do this yoga. See, Th that phrase to me when I first read it was like, it sounds like the poses make the kids feel silly because some of the poses can be silly, right? As I like, I've done a couple of these poses and they can be silly. Like they can look silly and goofy and, you know, like your butt's in the air and you got to clench your bottom and stuff like that. And th they're like silly words, you know, they're like fun, you know, kids are going to fucking giggle for it and stuff. Um, and, you know, we're encouraged so much in society to be prim and proper and stand like this and do this and, and you got to stand straight and you know so it's like doing something a little bit different that's not pressuring to me i think that's getting these kids to be cool with trying something new um doing stretches and stuff like the sun pose itself yes in relig if you look at it in a religious context it can be attributed as a religious thing but as just a stretch and it's called the sun pose or bow like as a bow to the sun god or whatever like if it's just the name of it i don't know if that merits it to be a religion uh so uh in plain school district stark county parents took issue to the morning yoga routine for all 300 students involving a tibetan bell and yoga poses. The elementary school also had a mindfulness room featuring scrolls containing quotes by the Dalai Lama. Consequently, the school district took an appropriate action and discontinued the program in 2013. God forbid people learn that there's something outside Christianity. Holy fuck. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if we were a, a more well-rounded and well-educated society that wasn't so fucking close-minded? Holy shit, Ugh. the whole planet would probably explode. The second coming of Jesus might show up if we learn stuff. The implementation of Eastern religion yoga in public school is such a divisive issue that parents uh, in Georgia called uh, called called it into question, called into question the practice in Alabama as banned yoga in schools statewide. Fucking hell. Propos proponents of uh, Eastern religion refute claims yoga is not a religious activity. Basically, that that sentence is phrased weirdly. They're basically saying that they do say that it is. Uh, Subhas Trivari, professor at Hindu University of America and graduate of the prestigious Bihar Yoga Bharati University, commented that the simple immutable fact is that yoga originated from the Vedic or Hindu culture. Its techniques were not adopted by Hinduism, but rather originated from it. In fact, the American Yoga Association has advised against yoga for children under the age of 16 because postures can interfere with still growing bodies. That's fair. Um, I think if, you know, if schools want to implement like a yoga program or something like that, where they're doing some stretches, they should probably have like a certified yoga instructor to come in and do some of the stretches that, you know, kids can do that's not going to impede with their growing bodies. That's like probably the most rational sense that this whole letter has. Um, even if yoga is, uh, is disputed as a form of religious practice, there is d little doubt on the effects of yoga. A study found that 62% of students in secular yoga uh, changed their primary reason for practicing. Most initiate yoga for exercise and stress relief, but uh, for many, spirituality become the primary reason for maintaining practice uh, of the study. Holy shit! They found something meaningful within it. Well, we can't have that. We can't have people finding meaning in things. We can't have something that transcends just exercise and uh, and better mental health practices to be like, 
I don't know, say a way of life. Boy, howdy, doesn't that sound dangerous? Boy, howdy, it would be like if somebody went to a certain place every Sunday for an hour just to listen to somebody talk uh, uh, every every single week on, on time, 9 a.m., filed into a fucking room. Boy, what does that sound like? Hmm, what does that sound? Does it sound like a fucking church? But that's in personal choice that they made, though. And this is making the thing that this is making the assertion that that will happen to people if they do yoga. No, it fucking won't. Additionally, in a separate study of mindful yoga retreat participants, Dean Shapiro found that the longer term mediators were less likely to be religious monotheists and likely to be identify as Buddhist or with all religions. Oh my goodness, they, they might discover polytheism, you guys. They might discover that there is a different form of religion and it's not just this one almighty authoritarian God that tells you to do what you need to do all the time without any fucking question. Holy balls, what are we going to do with this? While proponents of Eastern religion uh, allege yoga brings benefit to student practitioners, our, our, our biblical faith traditions um, bring just as many, if not more, scientifically proven benefits. Yet, ironically, in a nation of Judeo-Christian heritage, it is uh, school-sanctioned it, it is school sanctioned prayer, intelligent design curriculum, and the display of the Ten Commandments that are strictly prohibited from schools. All right. That is, they 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 just have a problem because it's Eastern philosophies. They wouldn't have a problem. I mean, this is hypocritical because that's what they want. The last statement just makes it look like, you know, um, they're they, it just shows how much of how how hypocritical they really are, right? Um, oh. It, if, if it was intelligent design and uh, all these Judeo-Christian practices and, this, and the prayer and all the, we'd, we'd totally be on board with it. But now that it's this thing, ah, fuck it. No way. No way. So the real question ends up being, is yoga a religion? And I think if the individual associates religiosity to the practice of yoga, then yeah, it's religious. It's a matter of personal opinion. It's not a matter of this definitive answer that it is. I think it's 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 what you get out of it, which is sort of a very Eastern philosophy is, hey, here's something that you could do. There's no real answer to what's supposed to happen um, when you do it. You get to figure that answer out for yourself. So there's a lot of like internal reflection there's a lot of self-discovery involved with a lot of Eastern philosophies. And that's just not something that I've seen Judeo-Christian religions offer or any sort of Western philosophy offer. In fact, a lot of Western philosophies are like, this is the way it is. This is the normal. This is how society operates. And if it's any different, then it's fucking bullshit. And we'll propagandize the shit out of it. And then we'll fucking tell people that if they do this, they're communists or Nazis. Huh? Bam. Boom. Done. Baby. Normal. Saved it. <laughs> Look, as an agnostic that grew up Hindu, um, I honestly find that uh, the breathing exercises are basically a doorway to mindfulness and help quell anxiety. Like I do a lot of the breathing exercises that I learned um, when I was practicing the religion of, uh, uh, of Hinduism. You know, so I still use those because I don't look at it as a religious thing for me. I look at it as a uh, as a way to kind of breathe in and breathe out and take more oxygen into my body, slow my heart rate, calm myself down a lot more, you know, um, and, and kind of alleviate my stresses. I use it as a as a mental health tool, as you if, if you will. Uh, I do the stretches. I do some yoga poses when I do my, my stretches when I work out. And that's primarily so uh, I don't hurt myself because that can happen. That's something that, uh, that is, that is uh, a plausible within, um, <laughs> you know, doing, doing yoga and stuff. Like, 
or, or just exercising in general, you can, you can hurt yourself. Um, I used to do these as a form of religious practice. And uh, when I became an atheist, it kept me away from all of this because there was all of this religious connotation attached to it. And I was so vehemently against it. Like I hated it so fucking much. Um, and, uh, and I just like steered away from it. And then once I started finding myself and finding out what my sense of self was, I was able to, um, I don't know, do something different with it. I was able to use it for a different purpose to, 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 to better myself as an individual, um, and better my, not just my mind, but also my body. So I don't view it as a religious practice. I view it as a practice to help mental, mental and physical health. That's the benefits that I get from it. So it's a very personal thing. Um, so to me, I think these, these, these folks, these clergy that wrote this letter are, um, are making some false equivalencies. Go figure uh, that these religious people are making false equivalencies. <laughs> <laughs> uh you know so the answer to that question is it kind of depends right like it depends what what does yoga mean to you uh what does what does uh, these the, the breathing and the stretching mean to you is is it the same as what it means to me it might not be you might get something more spiritual out of it you might get something um deeper and uh more connected to you know, some sort of uh, 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 higher being or, or something along those lines. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But to say that that is a definitive answer, I think is uh, reckless. And I think kids should be taught how to meditate. Kids should be taught how to reflect, especially teenagers. Boy, howdy. Can they fucking learn uh, to take a minute to reflect and be less reactive? I know some fucking adults that can learn how to do that to really be honest with yourself, to really look at a flaw in who you are as an individual and say, that is not cool. I kind of hate that I do that thing. And then not beat yourself up about it, but use it as a learning tool to say, hey, um, I'm gonna try to be better. I'm gonna correct this mistake and improve myself as a person. Eastern philosophies do teach that sort of stuff. It's not all about the religiosity behind it. So I, I, I think this is, um, in my opinion, a bit of a foolish, uh, foolish use of the clergy's time. <laughs> you know, and you got to learn about global religions anyway, right? So again, if if yoga can be taught as a, uh within historical context, I think they're fine. Let's look at the comment. Jumping jacks and squats are Nazi practices. Yeah, should we stop doing jumping jacks and squats in schools? <laughs> right? I mean, that's the thing is, like, there is physical benefit, you know, and, and better applications of this stuff, but people don't like to think that way. They, they, they are very, very stuck in their, in their belief systems. You know, I, I'd like to say that if I do have a religion, that it's curiosity and, uh, and, and learning more than, um, any sort of like deity or anything. So, um, yeah, I, I just think that this is a, uh, fruitless endeavor that they are, that they are participating in to make the world an unnecessarily more closed up space than what it is. I think especially now kids need to learn more about Eastern principles and Eastern philosophies. That's what I think. I might be wrong, uh, but, I, but I feel like I'm not. That's, you know. All right, we're moving into the big meat, the big meat of the, uh, of the subject matter, kapow. House bill fails the working class. We just uh, we just saw another uh, bill coming up for um, that that uh, passed through the House. Uh, that uh, that Nancy Pelosi, the Democratic crypt keeper, uh, she helped kind of put together, and uh, 
lo and behold, it is not only an insult to the to the name of the bill itself, uh, but I think it also fails the working class pretty uh, pretty intensely. Like it it is an abysmal failure to the working class people. Um, it's called the Heroes Act, and uh, so let's look at what this Heroes Act says and uh, some of the bigger problems that I have with it. So, uh, first of all, it's $3 trillion. It, it passed the House on Friday, and the claim right now is that it might not pass the Republican-controlled Senate uh, because it's too liberal when it's really not. Like, this is not a fucking liberal or progressive bill in the fucking least. Like, no, not even fucking close. Not even fucking close. Uh, so what does it have? It has another $1,200 stimulus check, which is a stopgap measure at best. It's just like the last $1,200 check, right? Just like the last $1,200 check, uh, it doesn't really take care of the income inequality issue. Uh, it didn't do that in April. It's not going to do that in May. And it's not going to do that in June and July when they're going to have to fucking reassess this shit again. And you can't have fucking the U.S. Treasury Department, Steve Mnuchin, come out and be like, well, that's supposed to last you, uh, you know, uh, 10 weeks as as uh, $1,200 does. That's that's just what you know how like bread's a nickel. Yeah. In 1922, maybe. How does the guy that works for the House Treasury, the, the U.S. Department of Treasury, not understand how inflation works like that's crazy a comedian understands how inflation works better than the fucking politician does that's fucking sad <laughs> so uh they have an extension of unemployment benefits uh and it goes to six hundred dollars per week all the way up to january 31st 2021 which is another stopgap measure right it's another stopgap measure into the great millennial depression that's about to come like we're on our way to another Great Depression, and all the Democrats are writing into bills are fucking stopgap measures. That's it. More SNAP money. Uh, this should have been guaranteed to everybody so that nobody goes hungry. Like, you should just have a couple hundred bucks in, uh, in SNAP benefits that come to you every single month. That should just be a guaranteed Everybody could have gotten a little card or they could have gotten a direct payment to their account, whatever. Uh, didn't do that. Didn't think about it. They were just like, people will figure it out. Maybe they'll eat the cardboard. I don't really know. That's their attitude. Uh, 12 month moratorium on evictions and mortgage forbearance. Uh, no rent or mortgage or debt cancellation, which means that more people will go into further debt. All this is doing is moving that that uh, uh, debt time clock down a little bit. That's all it's doing. It's not getting rid of the debt. It's not getting rid of anything. Um, you're going to see more foreclosures, more people go homeless. You're going to see 2008 repeat itself again. Uh, and we're basically setting the stage for another housing crisis by not canceling and uh, uh, freezing the rents and the mortgages and the debts. The banks are fine. They got $5 trillion. They got five. They're good. They're fine. What do they need our money to continue for? They don't. How does that make any sense? That they got a bailed out by the government, but we still have to make payments to them. We still have to help out the banks after the government helped out the banks. <laughs> Why are they getting double help? What do they do to get double help? Then there was $500 billion to states, um, which looks like it's about $10 billion per state. Um, $375 billion for local governments, $20 billion to tribes, and $20 billion to territories. I'm astounded that they even included the territories. Uh, now, if states and local were smart, they would take this money and implement direct payments to each of their citizens uh, which would mean that on a very incredibly small scale, we'd be means testing universal basic income. And they can brag that trickle down finally worked, even though it didn't. It also includes uh, testing funds, but it doesn't say anything about making it free for everybody. 
uh, which means that lower income and middle class people will um, will likely continue to spread the virus if they contract it. Uh, middle class and lower class people are who the essential workers actually are. They're the ones that are on the front line. They're the ones who this bill was written for, and there's no provision to get them free testing. Just that maybe we'll fund it. We'll fund we'll we'll fund the general idea of it, and then. When it comes to delivering these tests, you know, you fucking plebes can figure out what you what you want to do with it. That's how Nancy Pelosi wrote this fucking bill. $25 billion for the U.S. Postal Service. Nothing about hazard pay or better treatment for postal workers. Nothing about cleaning strategies of the postal, postal service itself. Um, you know, uh, so these are all kind of half measures. These are all platitude measures that don't really say much of anything. Uh, and it's no different than what was put out. Uh, well, there's one or two differences. Um, I think you don't need a social security number anymore. You can just work with a tax ID number if that's what it is. But it's like, there's no, you know, virtually no difference. You took like, you, you inched forward is all you did with this bill. When we needed a dynamic fucking leap forward, we needed to go, warp speed forward from April and you decided to go eh. that's it here's the big thing I ranted about this the other day uh, and, and a good good buddy of mine was was uh, a little concerned about it but uh, you know um, there's no UBI or paycheck guarantees uh, Nancy Pelosi refuses to call it UBI refuses to call it UBI uh, she got very offended when somebody was like, I'm not, I'm not fucking saying UBI. That's crazy. That's not, that's socialism. I can't, if I, if I say uh, UBI, uh, fucking Lenin will pop out of my chest and uh, destroy America. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't have that. That's, that's crazy. So she, uh, she didn't do it. Pramila Jayapal basically was calling for paycheck, what she calls paycheck guarantee plans. It's basically a direct cash payment every single month. It's $2,000 direct cash payments every single month to every adult in America, um, regardless of your taxes and so on and so forth. This is the fifth time something like this has been proposed. And it's the fifth time that Nancy Pelosi and the House Democrats fucking knocked it off the table. Didn't even consider it. Didn't even look at it. Tulsi Gabbard brought it up. Bernie Sanders brought it up. Ro Khanna's brought it up. Now, um, Kamala Harris is talking about it. Um, there's a couple other like corporate Democrats that have been talking about it. All of these people started jumping on board because they were like, hey, I don't think there's like another way to do this. And I'm trying to get votes like, <laughs> like I get that this is a vote measure. That's all it is. It's a neoliberal vote measure. They don't really give a shit. Like fundamentally, they've spoken out against this because they're getting their pockets flooded by the prison industrial complex and the fucking uh, insurance lobbies and all this shit. Like they don't actually give a fuck about universal basic income. But if they don't give universal basic income, they might lose their fucking votes. See, so Nancy Pelosi declined it. Uh, she said that it has merit, but she won't consider it because maybe Republicans would knock it down. Which is like, yeah, no shit. Like, Republicans don't care about this shit. They care about uh, working hard. And even though you can't get a job, you got to go get a job. And you got to get that working class ethic going. That's what makes America great, baby. Wage slavery makes America great again, baby. That's what does it. You know, and it's just like, where, who's get, where are we going to go get jobs from? That's fucking, there, there's, there are no jobs to be had right now. Um, she, she compromised on behalf of the Republicans by not considering this measure. Permila Jaipal is a, out of the progressive, co congressional progressive caucus or whatever the fuck it is. Um, the CPC or whatever it is called. There's all these names for all these things that I can't keep up with. Uh, Pramila Jaipal is the only one that didn't vote for this fucking bill. AOC voted for it. Ilhan Omar voted for it. Rashid Tlaib voted for it, even though it has none of the things that the that the Progressive Caucus actually wanted. They didn't they, they didn't push back hard enough because the Democratic Party doesn't legislate on behalf of the people. They legislate on behalf of corporations and bending the knee to fucking Republicans. That's what they do. They're like, oh, but the Republicans might say no. It's like, yeah, the Republicans might fucking say no. 
What are you going to do about it? Are you going to figure out a way to convince them? Isn't that your fucking job is to try to convince these people that they should probably vote on this shit, that this is beneficial, especially if they want to get reelected. Maybe they should fucking vote uh, on a bill that actually helps the people that put them in power in the first place. I doubt very much that she, this, this is, this is not really going to be a surprise statement, but Nancy Pelosi doesn't give a shit about progressivism. <laughs> like she just fucking doesn't. She's a guy, she's a goddamn millionaire trying to make legislation for a bunch of poor people. Like that's not like a thing that happens, you know, like, but like, we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk about her a little later. Um, this notion though of like, you know, you got to find compromises. That's what they always say, right? Like, oh, we can't do these progressive things because there's no compromise in it. It's too, it's too aggressive. It's too, uh, you know, it's too radical. It's too this, it's too that. And they got to compromise in Congress. They always compromise on behalf of the banks and not in, on behalf of the people, right? We, we are the ones that they compromise. We get compromised so that the banks get bailed out. Nobody talked about the fact that they needed to come up with a compromise when they were like, hey, maybe we should give trillions of dollars to the financial sector for virtually no fucking reason. Maybe we should bail out corporations. There's no there's no compromise there. You know, there's no compromise when it comes to running coups in other countries or blowing up brown people. Don't nope, don't worry about that. You don't need to compromise there. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to fucking do it. Everybody votes in, uh, exactly the same way. Is is yes to bailing out the banks, yes to coups in other countries we don't like, yes to blowing up brown countries. Democrats, Republicans, they all fucking do it. This might be a harsh statement, and I don't know who needs to hear it. And maybe the people that hear it are going to call me an asshole for saying it because they might be the any blue types. Uh, but if you think that the Democrats will ever legislate on behalf of the working class, or they are the good guys in this situation, you have been duped by congressional con men. You have been duped by congressional con artists. That's what's happened. They've run a grift on you, and you fucking fell for it. And we all have fallen for it. I fell for it when I first got into politics, right? When I was, a young, when I was like younger... But, you, you know, in my teens, I thought the Democrats were the good guys. And the older that I get, I'm just like, this is the one party system pretending to have two parties. Like, that's all it is. It's the party of money. It's the party of corporations. It's the party of the almighty dollar. That's all it is. And it just has two different heads. One is is slightly bluer and one is slightly redder. That's it. They are congressional con artists and they use these platitudes to suck you in and say all these nice things, and then they legislate the way they're legislating now, where, the, where the, the, the logical thing to do, the compassionate thing to do, the right thing to do, is to have a recurring payment for Americans that are struggling in this country. And Nancy Pelosi is like, no, I can't do it because I have to bend the knee to Republicans. The Republicans might say no. Yeah, so what? Fucking fight for it. That's why you're in office. And she doesn't. Because she's not a, she's not for the working class people. She's secretly a fucking Republican. That's what she is. All of the Democrats are. There's only one party, folks. And this is an example of that. <sighs> They've had five chances to directly help the working class people in this country. Like I mentioned, five different times this, this notion of UBI has shown up. Five fucking different times. And they bailed on it each time. They bailed on it every single time. They enrich themselves just like the Republicans do. That's what they care about. Stop championing these people. Stop coming out and being like, oh my God, Nancy Pelosi is so bold. Oh my God, she said all of these things. Oh my God. No, Nancy Pelosi does not fucking fight for you. She fights to make herself an, a, another million dollars so she can become a multimillionaire. That's what Nancy Pelosi is interested in. She's interested in corporate fucking um, corporate bailouts. 
That's all she cares about. Stop championing exploitation. Stop championing these people that want to exploit you for their votes to keep Nancy Pelosi in office. That's all she that's why she says those nice things. Not once has she followed through on those nice things. And I'll prove that shit in a bit. <laughs> Stay tuned, folks. <laughs> Stay tuned for uh uh for 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 later in the episode how Nancy Pelosi fucked the working class. <laughs> Uh, the other, the other major thing that uh, uh, was sort of uh, uh, a slap in the face to the working class people in this new stimulus bill, stimulus bill, if you even fucking want to call it that, uh, is Cobra subsidies to protect health insurance companies who are turning a profit right now. They're making money. They've all come out and just been like, "Yeah, we're not, we're fine. We don't, we're not even concerned that this is going to affect us." By the way, like we're. I'm in a bathtub made of money right now, like not filled with money. Like I have so much money that I constructed a bathtub out of money and then I filled it with money. That's how much money I'm making right now. Like it's, this is, this is not even that big of a deal. Like my boner is just a, a roll of hundreds. I don't even have a penis anymore. It's just like a roll of hundreds is what, like, that's how rich I am. I replaced my penis with cash. Like, they're not worried about it. <laughs> they're just not fucking worried about it. Here's why they did that, though. Um, so with the larger number of unemployed people, more people might end up going on Medicare or Medicaid, which means that more of the budget will be allocated to Medicare or Medicaid to support the people that are on these programs. Uh, which means less money for private insurance companies. Uh, and th they thrive on people having employment because people's employment is how people get health insurance with these private insurance companies. Em Employer-connected health care is basically how you are a slave to your job. Uh, and, and corporations in tandem with the health insurance companies and the pharmaceutical companies uh, are holding you hostage for little to no pay. Uh, and then they get to treat you like shit because the, it, because you're like, well, you want that health care, don't you? Don't you want that health care, baby? Huh? I want I want to keep you healthy. Oh, you got to stay with me. I know I don't pay you very much. I know I abuse the shit out of you. I know I make you work late. I know you haven't seen your kids in forever, but you want to stay healthy, don't you, baby? I love you. That's why I want to give you health care that comes directly out of your, your paycheck. This is how abusers behave. Subsidizing COBRA, it, it basically forces people um, to, to go to these private health insurance companies. Uh, and it basically forces people that people don't get Medicare. So it, it essentially is the legislative equivalent of fucking like, this is how they legislatively fuck Medicare, like the notions of Medicare for all to, to basically be like, well, see, see, it doesn't work. We knew that it was going to not going to work here. This is proof that it doesn't. But here's the thing. If you funded Medicare, Medi Medicaid and Medicare the same way you fund these subsidies, the same way that you bail out private insurance companies, I bet it would succeed too. I bet you that it would fucking succeed. Before we get into this next part, let's look at some comments. Marky V, Marky Viola. He's the uh, comedian that I talked about earlier in the show. Uh, I showed up for yes, blowing up brown countries, and I'm already on board. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Mark, have you? <laughs> I have a, a a a a fun company that you could work for. I don't know if you've heard of them. They're a small little company called the C I. Am I saying this right? A C I A. I think they're called. <laughs> Stop making healthcare sound like my ex. It's it's not healthcare. It's private healthcare. It's uh, it's healthcare connected to your employment healthcare. It's how corporate healthcare works. Uh, and I'm I'm sorry, uh, and I hope you're okay. Uh, it's gonna be fine. Uh, remember, uh, you don't have healthcare to get a therapist. Uh, anyway, uh, so. <laughs> Uh, as we continue down, uh, this is the part where I'm going to talk to you about how Nancy Pelosi has fucked the working class. As promised, folks. As 
promised. Um, so uh, Nancy Pelosi made a speech. I watched this 20 minute fucking speech that she made um, about the Heroes Act and and how this 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 is really for the heroes, our essential workers, those frontline men and women that are putting their lives at risk for us. And look at the pittance that I'm giving them, and and I'm I'm posturing and making myself look good. Isn't this? I have I'm wearing a blazer and a, and a matching mask uh, that I that I purchased from Amazon because Amazon lines my pockets. Um, you know that's that's the way that uh, fucking Nancy Pelosi acts. So she claims that the Heroes Act will be a tremendous help for our he heroes, uh, and virtually it's the same corporate bailout as the fucking April bill. Right, and it hands pittances to the middle class. One pay, one check of twelve hundred dollars. Well, maybe we'll extend the unemployment um, out to twenty twenty one, but we'll still make the whole system super fucking complicated and super fucked up. Uh, and uh, we're not even sure if we're going to be able to send out all these checks or make any of these direct payments, uh, just like the last time. <laughs> but she cares, guys. It's going to make a tremendous impact on the working class, and I think by, by tremendous impact, I think she means that she's going to crush the working class by using this piece of legislation designed to look like she's trying to help. Um, not one point in this 20-minute speech does she mention any of the essential worker strikes, walkouts, sickouts that are happening all across the country. She never mentions any of their demands, and uh, the Democrats are basically doing nothing to meet said demands. This piece of legislation doesn't meet their demands. It's just kind of fluff. Uh, doesn't measure any of it. She doesn't talk to regular people. I, like, I don't think she's ever talked to regular people to begin with. She talks to lobbyists. She talks to the business sector. Uh, she ignores what people want, and she claims she's doing this for them. She claims that this is for the people. People need this. I'm doing this because I love them. She mentions the uh, 36 million dollar, uh, sorry, 36 million people, uh, 36 million plus, or it's more than 36 million people uh, that are on unemployment, and it's unimaginable, which basically translates to, boy, I really thought that we could uh, con you guys into wage slavery for like another decade or so, but then this fucking virus happened, and it's like, oh man, what a bummer to all of our plans of corporate authoritarianism. Like, this fucking sucks for us, guys. This is really fucked up. I mean, what this virus is doing is really fucked up. So now we got to go to, like, plan B, where we kind of give you, like, some pittance, and then maybe when this virus is over, then we can shove you guys back into, into wage slavery, and you can worship me like your Yas Queen. Then she goes on to say, well, I have empathy for the workers over this stress that they must be facing. Yet she does dick all. She fucking does dick all to legislate on their behalf. Like she does nothing to legislate on their behalf. No Medicare for all, no rent or debt cancellation, no UBI, no corporate transparency, no worker protections, no increase in hazard pay, no guaranteed sick leave, none of it. She's got nothing in there. She says she's got a plan to succeed and put more money in the pockets of the American people, especially the ones that are essential. And she denied all of that shit to play politics. She uses speeches like this to basically pull tug at the heartstrings of the American working class and not do anything for them. That's how she operates. The Fed has told her to think big and act for the people, and she has thought big. She thought, thought big for the private insurance companies, and her own pockets, and how this COBRA subsidy is going to line her pockets, and she's going to get rich. At one point, she starts talking about the uh, history of the past few months and how proud she is of the bipartisanship that they have faced in this country. Oh, she's so proud, you guys. She's so proud of it. March 4th, she talks about testing, that they put forward this note uh, idea for testing. Then she goes, quote, I'm not fulfilled, but hey, 
at least we got that bipartisanship down, right? We fucking nailed it on that bipartisanship front. We got it. We 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 sure as shit didn't stop any of the corporations from uh, coming in with their money and interests and making sure that testing was a lot harder to do in the United States and people can't even afford to get tested unless they're a bunch of rich people. Uh, but boy, it looked good for a photo op of all of us kind of shaking hands and looking looking at the camera with our thumbs up like we did a good job. We made friends. March 14th, masks, 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 she says. Uh, PPE, not fully realized. But, you know, y come on, guys. Remember those photo ops we took? We nailed it on those photo ops. Everybody looked so good. We didn't even look decrepit. They didn't, they didn't make any of this stuff happen. They legislated for it, and people still can't afford tests. There still isn't enough testing kits out there because these corporations have moneyed interests. There's, there's PPE didn't come through the same way because fucking um, co big corporations <laughs> used a loophole to get in the way. They're not manufacturing masks or ventilators or any of this stuff. They're not um, doing any of that shit. And where are they, where are they enforcing that? But we should all celebrate them for the fact that, oh, they shook hands across the aisle. They did a nice thing for a photo. Then she goes to March 28th, CARES Act. Republican leadership in the Senate came up with the CARES Act, and then it became an interim PPE bill. And then they negotiated, um, and basically they negotiated to give us plebes a pittance so we would shut the fuck up. Now we, the Dems, oh, we're, we're suggesting the same thing now. We're, we're suggesting 80%, you know, and, and it's basically the same thing that the Republicans were saying back in April. And we should be proud of this. This is amazing, you guys. The Republicans and Democrats finally agreed to basically not do dick all for the working class people. They voted bipartisanly and enforced ignorantly. They didn't make any of this shit come through. People still haven't received their $1,200 checks that they said that they were going to get. There's still people f unsure about what to do for unemployment. And Nancy Pelosi is claiming that she's proud of this. There's an OSHA mandate that they apparently put out uh, as part of this bill. And even if that comes through, what are they going to do to actually make sure that it happens? They have failed in everything. Testing, not fulfilled. Masks, not realized. Masks and PPEs, not realized. And you expect this bill to be something that we're going to champion and celebrate? When these meager little things that you have legislated for, you can't even make sure it comes to fruition. At one point in the speech, she comes out and she says, these are the American people. These are our families. Holy shit. <clears throat> if this is how... She treats family. Boy, howdy. I do not want to be part of her family, right? Like, don't don't ask her to come help you move or anything, you guys. Like, don't don't have her come, come over and help you move because she'll she'll filibuster for a, a couple hours and then she'll give your money. She'll give more money to your landlord to throw a pizza party while you move all your stuff in by yourself. Then she goes, this is not a Christmas tree. Yeah, no shit, there's not a Christmas tree. Usually on Christmas, we get the things that we want. We get presents that we're excited about. Not bullshit half measures that aren't even going to be enforced in the first place. She goes, this is a tailored plan to meet the needs of the American people. According to whom? These are not the needs that we asked for. We didn't ask for COBRA subsidies or one payment of $1,200. We didn't ask for handouts to corporations. We didn't we didn't didn't say don't enforce the OSHA laws. 
do you legislate and don't enforce? We didn't ask for that either. We have to think about the costs now is, is something that she talks about. Oh, we have to think about the costs and the opportunities lost. Yeah, and, and she's right. She has lost it. Nancy Pelosi has lost a, uh, a major opportunity to unequivocally prove that she fights for the working class because she doesn't. She threw away major portions, major ideas um, that were put forward by a progressive caucus, and she threw it away because the Republicans might say something mean about it. She's not on the side of the working class. She's a fucking millionaire. She doesn't know what people, average working class people go through. She only meets with the business sector. That's all she gives a shit about. While I was watching that speech, this was a 20 minute speech. You can look it up. It's on, it's on the Hills YouTube page. She was kind of stumbling um, and, and it sounded like she was having a really hard time. Um, nothing as bad as Joe Biden, by the way. Uh not as not as bad as old Joe. Old Joe is is having a rough go of it, and I don't think Nancy's too far behind. She couldn't really like finish a whole sentence, and she was doing like the same thing as like when you know when you have like a fourth grader that's reading a book report like these. Uh, sometimes you have to help the essential workers and the essential workers are important and nice. Look up at camera. Like that's like, that's kind of how she was reading her speech. It was, it sounded really disingenuous. And I think it's done on purpose. I, I think she's disingenuous, um, on purpose, um, because I think she's a disingenuous individual. I think she's in to line her own pockets. And she had a really hard time with that speech. She's stumbling and she's staggering over these words. Probably because her brain wants to say the truth. Hey, if we give the plebes a little bit more cash, maybe they'll shut the fuck up and go away. And then we can start lining our pockets and using this pandemic as an opportunistic way to become richer. But she has to make it sound like these essential workers are the heroes. They're on the front lines and deserve our respect. And that statement is true, but it's not acted upon. And it's said disingenuously by Nancy Pelosi. The only time she said something stern to the point, matter of fact, confidently, was when she told Jake Tapper, calm down. When Jake Tapper asked her, what are these states and local governments going to do to, to help the, the citizens of their cities and states face this global pandemic? She goes, calm down. You'll get your money. Shut the fuck up, Jake. Confident. No stumbling. On point. On message. That's her message to the American people. Calm down. We'll get you your money when we get you your money. That's the way, that's who Nancy Pelosi is. This bill is an utter failure. And until, um, until they figure out how to, how to economically, you know, take care of the American people, um, there, there will be more bills that will be more failures. We have a Republicans that are coming out and realizing that the way forward is a UBI plan. You might not want to call it a UBI because you're scared of the socialism word, but that is going to have to be, um, that is that is probably going to have to be the feature for it. We're seeing worker strikes all across the country from uh, sanitation workers in New Orleans and Pittsburgh, McDonald's workers, Costco employees, Amazon employees. The Amazon strikes are starting to get, get bigger. So Instacart, Target, Shipped, all these companies all these workers are going on strike. They're going on strike <laughs> because people like Nancy Pelosi are not legislating on their behalf. They're going on strike because they're in unsafe working conditions. They're not getting paid enough. Their life is on the line. They're losing their health care. And every single way that this country is operated as the norm it doesn't, it doesn't work anymore. 
the norm has failed us several different times and is going to continue to fail us going forward. So we need to think differently. The, most, the Fed saying think big, yeah, think radical. Don't. I don't think that's what the Fed meant, by the way. I don't think I don't think the chairman of the Fed was like, make, maybe you should make some radical changes. Maybe you should do something more progressive. Do you think do you think you should give like five trillion dollars to the American people through like monthly payments and stuff? Is that something you know how we just kind of like make up money out of thin air? Do you think we should do that to the American people? Like I'm not saying that. To them, think big was Cobra subsidies. More taxation type things, unemployment benefits, all the shit that didn't work in April. Let's do it again. This bill is a failure and the Democrats continue to fail. Purple Jaipal didn't vote for this bill. She, um, she pushed back against Nancy Pelosi a little bit um, which is which is finally nice to see, like the progressive wing pushing back against this neoliberal class of uh, Democrats in Congress. It's nice to see that a little bit, um, but uh, you know we need to see more of it. To be honest, AOC needs to be standing up, but she's kind of bent the knee. Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, all these people, they fucking bent the knee. They're just like, yeah, we'll just vote for whatever whatever Queen Nance tells us to do. That's not progressive. That's not on the side of the working class. There is a populist wave in, in, the, in the ranks of the proletariat, and they are straight up fucking ignoring it. They are ignoring it. And that's why we're seeing strikes. That's why I talk, I've, I've spent a whole fucking month and a half talking about strikes on, the, on these shows, on these live streams, of why they happened, what, what was successful about them, what didn't succeed, what we can learn from them. We've seen more wildcat strikes in the last two months than we have in a long time. And there's a reason. It's because this neoliberal, for-profit, winner-take-all capitalist system is not fucking working. And it will not work if we keep doing the same shit over and over again. I think that's the episode, you guys. That is the episode... Um, as per usual, uh, if you would like to, you can uh, donate, become a sustaining member, or make a one-time donation. Uh, I have a brand new album that's coming out in, um, in, in just a few weeks. On June 1st, my new album comes out. I'm going to post a link to it uh, right now. Um, it's available for pre-order via Bandcamp for a dollar. Um, and you can you can get it uh, for a dollar, and uh, I'm I'm doing it that way because I want everybody to be able to enjoy it. Uh, because everybody's going through a difficult time right now. But if you would like to, you can totally um, you can totally uh, 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 give a little bit more if you can. Right, that's the link right there uh, to the to the new album. Um, you can grab it and. Uh, uh, it's, it's got, the band camp is also going to have like a bunch of bonus tracks and stuff to it as well. Um, and as for always, make sure that you like, share, subscribe. It, it you, liking the video helps a whole lot. Uh, especially if you watch it on YouTube, if you hit that like button, it, uh, it helps me out a whole fucking bunch. Uh, because I'm pretty sure YouTube doesn't show this sort of stuff to a whole lot of people. And then I see like a bunch of, uh, view counts get taken away from me and yeah, all this other crazy shit. So, um, yeah, so make sure you hit that like button, hit the share, share this out to as many people as you possibly can to groups, whatever, whoever you think would enjoy this thing, friends, enemies, so on and so forth. Um, and, uh, make sure you're subscribed. If you're if you're subscribed, you'll get notifications when I put videos up. I'm going to be putting up a bunch of videos this coming week, um, and don't forget that show. I have a uh, a virtual live stand up comedy show. There are clips that kind of show you a preview of what the show is going to feel like. 
Um, that is that is available. I'll put the ticket link up there. Um, and there are, are limited spots available for this show. So make sure you grab your tickets from that link uh, because that is uh, going to be how you get the login information. That is how you will be able to get into the virtual showroom so that we don't have any sort of Zoom bombing experience that will uh, kind of disrupt the show. So, uh, you know, grab your tickets. Uh, if you're a sustaining member, you get free tickets through this. Go check your Patreon emails for that code. Uh, if you attended the May 8th show, you also get a free ticket to come to this one. And this show is going to be like three-fourths, totally new material. Um, so even if you caught the May 8th show, coming to, the, coming to any of these sh Citizen Revolution comedy shows is going to be a completely different experience. So, um, yeah, check that out. Uh, I hope that some of you guys make it, like I said, spots are limited. So make sure you grab your tickets as soon as you can. Uh, and, uh, I think that's it. You guys, uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you to everybody that left a comment, uh, until tomorrow, tomorrow's episode is going to be a little personal. It might be a little heavy, uh, but I hope that you guys can join it because it's, uh, I don't think I've really talked about it a whole lot with a whole bunch of other people. Like a few people know about tomorrow um, and and the subject matter surrounding tomorrow, but not a lot. But I hope that you will, uh, you will join in on the, on, on that story for tomorrow. Uh, that'll be on around noon. Um, so I hope to see some folks out and uh, thank you again. And we'll see you soon. Bye.